Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. No, you see me in my little gorilla wear sweater. You're wondering why. Also, why I've been making videos in a long time. I've been sick, as you can tell. Uh, couldn't work out for like almost a week now. And the downside is, uh, as I started getting sick, you know, I'm used. I don't, I don't go to the hospital because I don't have insurance. So I'm used to letting my body recover naturally. I don't like taking medicine and shit like that. I don't believe in that unless it's extreme. So normally, I um, I tend to wait until I, I get better. And it's been happening, I mean, last time I went to the hospital was when I was like 16, you know, for that's when I was living with my parents. But uh, since I'm 24 now, and every time I'm sick, I just let my body recover. But unfortunately this time, the first time the symptoms came in, I figured, hey, it's today's a gym day. I'm not gonna skip the gym because I'm a little cold. Went to the gym, broke down my, my body, full body workout, intense, squats, back, everything, you name it. And that was a big, that's a big dunno. Because what happens is you impede your body's ability to recover because you, obviously you're sick. And then you, when you're sick, your body needs more time and more energy to recover. And then you go and you train. So now your body has two two things it needs to fix with limited resources. So make a long story short, I had to call out of work and school. It was all hectic and shit. And so I didn't make videos in a long time. Uh, my appetite wasn't up there. Couldn't sleep at night. But make a long story short, Team 3D Alpha is back in business. Um, I'm not going to let that stop me. But uh, I've been trying to bring this video to you guys for a long time, right? I've been doing a lot of research on protein synthesis, hypertrophy. You guys know me. Uh, I'm never satisfied with my results. I always want more and more muscle gains. So I'm always doing research, figure out what works. And I made videos explaining why, you know, drop sets and supersets and giant sets, all these things will add more muscle mass in the long run in a short period of time than your typical, you know, three sets of 10 routine with, with the regular tempo. And I did more research to, to back that up. And I told you guys on this channel, it's not a religion, right? Nothing is absolute. Nothing is absolute. I always try to look at both sides of the spectrum and look for a standpoint. Right? I look at science, I look at bro science, and then I make my conclusion. Also based on my my own observation of my own body. I'm been blessed to have a lot of friends that work out, so it gives me different body types to look at. Uh, people have a lot of experiences under their belt. I ask a lot of questions, you guys know me. If I meet somebody that's big, I don't care if he's on steroids or what, I always ask questions. Yes, there's genetics. Yes, there's steroids involved. Yes, there's other things, but it doesn't hurt to ask as many questions as possible to a very, very, very big um, pool of subjects and enjoy your conclusions, right? So I'm, a, I'm my own little personal scientist, right? And recently, I've been studying hy uh, hypoxia, which is the you know the lack of oxygen supply to the muscle and how it relates to muscle growth. And the, the way I, I came to that conclusion was it was amazing because at first I didn't even know about such a theory. It was just a theory. I was studying gorillas. You guys remember I, was, I, was, I made a video about gorillas and why they have big chests and shit like that. I was watching a lot of documentaries on gorillas. You guys know I don't just study bodybuilding, right? I'm all over the fucking world. I study everything. So I was studying uh, um, gorillas. I was watching all these documentaries on YouTube. And they, they mentioned something amazing. Because I always look for hypertrophy in anything that I, you know, I study. Like I tell people, if you want to learn about building muscle, don't look at bodybuilders only. Look at people who build muscle without trying to, who did it by accident. Find out what they were doing, because people that are trying to build muscle, you're going to have too much anecdote, too much, oh, I, I ate three cookies at 3 a.m. in the morning, and that's how I got big. You know, you're going to get too much of that. Go to people who don't even know what building muscle is, and just built it by pure accident. Find out what they were doing, what they were eating. So look at this documentary on gorillas, and they, they, they mention that, they actually show you, there's lowland gorillas and, and mountain gorillas. The lowland gorillas, obviously lowland gorillas, they stay on like the... And then, you know, the um, the floor and shit. And the mountain gorillas are the ones who venture up up on the mountains where it's a lot colder, the climate is different. The food is not that different, but the climate is different. And most importantly, um, there's a lack, of, you know, the, the oxygen content in the air is not the same as at the bottom, right? It's basic science. We learned that in the fucking high school and shit. And one remarkable difference between the lowland gorillas and the mountain gorillas is that the mountain gorillas were not only a lot bigger, but a lot more muscular. Because it's one thing if you're bigger, that could be fat, glycogen, or water. But these guys had a lot more muscle mass than the ones that were, that were lowland, even if they ate the, the same diets. And when lowland gorilla families would go up to the mountain gorillas and stay there for a long time, those lowland gorillas, even, even without mixing with the mountain gorillas, will also develop muscle mass, especially the silverback. He'll get a lot bigger and stronger. Um, and I was wondering, wow, that's fascinating. Why is that? So I paused the documentary and I wrote it down, started doing my own research, and I realized, well, the biggest difference between the lowland gorillas and the mountain gorillas is not just the climate, it's the, um, the oxygen. The oxygen is very, it makes it very, very hard to breathe. If you guys ever went hiking or you went up a high mountain, whatever, it's very hard to breathe when you're in, you know, a really, really high altitude because of the oxygen. It's not the same content up there as, as below. 
So I was like, hmm, interesting. Hypoxia, which is the lack of oxygen supply to the muscle, makes it grow. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. And it started ringing bells, saying things that I, I, I had read in the past, but they pay attention to. So I went to scholar.google.com, which is a website I recommend to everybody who wants to get um, personal or professional you know, um, research on, on hypertrophy or whatever. Um, so I went on Scholar Google and I typed hypoxia, da 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 da, um, protein synthesis, hypertrophy, all those fancy terms I had to learn my, on my own and shit from reading these fucking articles. Um, and I, I, I saw a study that they performed where they had two groups of people training. One group of people, um, the first group, um, were training under normal conditions, three sets of ten, same shit. And the second group were training in a hypoxic environment, meaning they found a way, don't ask me how they did that shit, they found a way to do like the fucking Goku spaceship thing where they put them in, in environments where the oxygen was really low. I don't know if it's a room or whatever they use, but the oxygen and air was really low. So these guys were using less weight than the people training in the, under normal circumstances, but the people that were in a hypoxic environment built more muscle mass over the long run and had more protein synthesis elevated than the group that was lifting under normal conditions with heavy weight. Same rep range. They both did the same rep ranges. The only difference is the group that was in, you know, in the hypoxic environment had to take less weight, which is funny because with less weight and 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 in you know the oxygen deficit, they build more muscle than the optimum um, amount of weight under normal conditions. So the scientists realized, whoa, the lack of oxygen in the muscle plays a big part in speeding up hypertrophy. So I was like, bam! I wrote that down. And you guys know me, man. If I see two or three things, that's not enough to convince me. I gotta keep studying and studying and studying until everything, bro, science to science, agrees on one thing, right? So then I go over and I, I find out about this occlusion training thing, right? I mean, I used to see that shit on, the, on YouTube all the time. I never took a, took my chance to even look at it. I was like, oh, what the fuck is that? There's always a, a new fucking fad out there. But I, I went back into it. I was like, oh, I heard about that occlusion training thing. And occlusion means, you know, um, blood flow, um, limiting blood flow to the muscle. So I look up occlusion training. Oh, I hope this video is still playing. I'd be so mad if it's not. Okay, still playing. I look up occlusion training, which is called Katsu. And it's this guy in Japan that developed this thing where uh, you restrict, you know, you kind of like restrict blood flow to the muscle. So say if you're doing biceps, you, you keep the, you, you, you kind of bind your arm, right? So that the blood is going, the blood is going in, right? Because you're getting a pump, but it's not going back to get that fresh supply of oxygen, right? This biology guys, just Google that shit. And so they're working out, they're getting a great pump and they're getting a lot of lactic acid buildup that burn because the oxygen is not going back to get the new supply. And this guy discovered that that shit built muscle like crazy. He tried it on himself. In fact, he discovered katsu training or occlusion training when he was, uh, I think, at a, at a Buddhist festival. And he was sitting down. You know how Buddhists sit down on their knees and shit. And he realized that his cat, the blood was not going to his calves because he was staying like he was he was sitting down like that for a long time. And his calves started swelling, kind of like that pump you get. He said he had the same pump that you get from doing calf raises, and he had the same burn and lactic acid. He's like, Yo, I'm not even doing calf raises. I'm just sitting there. And his scabs had the same feeling. So he did more research and he found out when you limit blood flow to a muscle, meaning you don't you don't give it a new oxygen supply, protein synthesis takes place. And make a long story short, Katsu revolutionized Japan and the world actually, a lot of people are actually studying that shit because it's working. They're using it on patients that struggle with, um, that are losing muscle mass, people that are in bed and that can't work out in the hospital or whatever. Uh, and people use Katsu training because it allows them to lift light weights. These motherfuckers can't lift heavy weights, right? So they're laying in bed and losing muscle mass because you guys know if you're laying in bed for a long time, you lose muscle mass because your body's not using the muscles. So, so they can't lift heavy because they're sick. So Katsu training allows them to lift light weights, but because the blood supply is limited, they you know they're, 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 it's preventing atrophy. It's, it's pre preventing their muscle from shrinking, and some of them their muscles actually grow. And he also tried to experiment when he had an injury and he couldn't make full use of his leg. I think his left or right leg. So he had to put his leg in the cast, and because he didn't want his leg to shrink, he started doing, you know, katsu training. He, he, you know, put the thing around his leg, limited the blood flow, and not only his legs stopped getting smaller, which is supposed to happen on everybody, his leg actually got bigger. So that leg became bigger than the other leg because of the katsu training, um, which is interesting. But anyway, so make a long story short, now they're trying to use that in Japan because uh, a lot of old people are going to be bedridden soon and it's going to increase the money for, you know, the, the healthcare system, blah, 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 blah. So they're trying to find a way to keep those people from <clears throat> wasting away. So they can use an the occlusion training because, like I said, they don't have to live heavy and they can still make a lot of muscle gains. So I use that uh, with, hold on a second. I gotta keep checking, man, because this camera be fucking with me. So I use that and I was like, man, that makes a lot of sense. Then one day I was watching a documentary on... Um, on, it was a weird documentary. It had nothing to do with, with bodybuilding. 
And these guys from Indonesia were, you know, very, very poor. So they had to climb up a mountain, climb up a really high mountain to go get sulfur to supply their families, whatever. They had to go get sulfur from the volcano and, and bring it back down and sell it for a lot of money because it's really hard to get sulfur because the volcano is poisonous, blah, blah, blah. So these guys, you're chill, dog. Chill. Chill. So these guys had to wear, um, had to carry this big, it's, it's kind of like a big ass ball, but it's not a ball, but it's this long ass stick, right? They would go up to the top of the mountain, they'll put all the sulfur in the in this heavy bags, really heavy, and they'll put it on like the thing. So it's kind of like a ball, but it's this fucking long ass uh, thing on their back, you know, with fucking two bags on the side, and they had to walk all the way up and all the way back down the mountain. And they were doing it their whole lives, right? It was really heavy. And all those guys, for some reason, all those guys, when they put the thing down, you look at the traps, they were fucking huge. You know those guys were skinny and malnourished and shit? The traps were overdeveloped because they had to, obviously, it's kind of like doing, I made a video guys telling you guys, when you squat heavy, you grow your traps. I don't care what nobody tells you. You have to retract your scapula and you're putting tension on your traps. Stop thinking that contraction is the only way to, to, to activate the muscle. Just tension on the muscle is going to make it grow. So they had the barbell on their, on their traps for a long time, over, you know, over a long period of time, and they all had these huge traps with these skinny little bodies, which is hilarious. But um, to show you that, obviously what's happening is they're going up the mountain. Not only is, you know, there's, there's very low oxygen up there, but forget that. The fact that the ball is resting on the traps for such a long period of time, the blood is stuck there. It doesn't have a lot of time to go back and get, um, you know, oxygen. Take a person that's really, really pale and put a ball on his back for a long time, like a really pale white guy. And when you take it off, you see it's all red and shit. The blood just goes there. So the traps grew. And then I made a story about the, the guy from Thailand. You guys know that famous story I made. Who, who was really skinny and his master wanted him to uh, to get bigger real quick. So his master had him carry two heavy buckets of water just like that. And he had to go up um, a hill, up and down all day long. And his traps fucking grew because he had to hold the buckets for so long. And it was pulling down on his traps. And he had to do that every single day for like two hours a day, I think. It was the length of two football fields. Up and down, no shrugging, just walking, and it was pulling. It's like doing farmer walks, it was pulling on the straps. So the blood was stuck there, hypoxia, the burn, lactic acid, all that shit. And his dress fucking grew, and the rest of his body remained the same. So I'll be some of the videos still playing. I gotta hurry up, fuck. So, guys, um, hold on, let me. Alright, guys, I got tired of checking this shit every two and three minutes, so I had to go back and delete some old videos. I'm, I'm lazy as fuck. But anyway, uh, the next example was, I have so many examples, but I have to make the video short because I just looked at it, it's like 12 minutes long. But sprinters, you guys know sprinters are some of the most jacked athletes on the planet. Like, n muscular as fuck and lean. And one thing that I, 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 I noticed when I observed sprinters, because I observed them a lot, that's why I sprint so much, guys. That's the best way to build your abs without doing a single sit-up. Watch my videos when I was lean as fuck, like a year ago. And look how crazy my abs were. And everybody was asking me, what are you doing for your abs? Is all you train abs? I don't do a single sit-up or leg raise. All I did was sprint. Anyway, that's, that's a whole different video. Uh, so I was looking at sprinters, and um, I was looking at why they were so muscular, and I was like, oh, I remember one of the sprinters, he, you know, he was making an interview, and asked him what is the hardest part of sprinting. And he said, one of the hardest things is the burn. And I was like, the burn? What the fuck are you talking about? And they said that when they run, because they have to run as fast as possible and move their muscle as fast as possible, they have, not only are they using... The, 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 the demand for ATP is amazing, guys. And they run out of oxygen really fast, right? Because you gotta, like, think about it. You're going from a desktop position and you're just running 100 meters, 200 meters, whatever. So they say that a lot of people think it's just hard to run. No, it's sometimes because they're running so fast and they're using oxygen so much to fuel the muscles, the lactic acid is bad as fuck. And we never think about it because we only think of the burn as when you're curling for too long, right? So they get a lot of burn, like I said, it's taking all over their body and shit. So sometimes they do something called soda doping where they take a lot of soda, you know, it's a long story, you know, like they take soda, it's high in alkalinity, so it kind of like neutralizes the acidity of the blood, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, they, ex they, they, they experience hypoxia when they're sprinting. There's a lot of hypoxia because there's not enough oxygen in their, in their body to supply the, you know, the workload that they're doing. So what ends up happening is they get jacked. Yeah, they get jacked obviously because of the diet and they also work out. But, you know, you understand that these guys sprint for a living. So they're always, if hypoxia, you know, causes hypertrophy, and they experience hypoxia almost every day or two, three times a week, you know, you know, for years, obviously, it, it also explains why they're so muscular, right? It's not the only reason, but it's one of the factors um, because they say they all feel that. You ask Usain Bolt, he'll tell you. When they run for a long time, not marathon runners. Marathon runners, 
because you're not running too fast and too hard, you have plenty of oxygen. You have time to breathe and go in, this and that. Sprinting is a whole different story. You burn out oxygen so fast, so the demand is, you know, a lot higher. So um, you have, you have gymnasts, right? I, I did an extensive study on gymnasts. You know, these motherfuckers that are always on fucking dipping poles and shit and doing all these fancy shit. You notice how they have these crazy triceps? The triceps are ridiculously huge. Ask any gymnast, he'll tell you one of the hardest things sometimes, but they do for training, they just, they do stationary dips. They don't do dips, they do stationary, they just stay like this on the ball to increase strength. And what ends up happening is it burns. They say it burns like hell until they get used to it. So they're always, always in the hypoxic environment in their tricep, right? And, and look at any gymnast, you see the triceps are fucking huge. And they don't do push down, they don't do skull crushes. Most of them, you know, the majority of them. The modern day gymnasts kind of do like new things, but the, you know, old school gymnasts have huge trust just, just because of hypoxia, because of that time under tension. Keyword, time under tension. Every time I say time under tension, people think it's this new revolutionary method. It's nothing new, guys. Um, what's another example? There's so many examples. But anyway, the video is too fucking long. The point I'm trying to make is uh, hypoxia, guys, time under tension, drop sets, super sets, giant sets, whatever it takes for you to keep the muscle under tension. Don't worry too much about uh, you know, oh, I have to see a lot of people take full range of motion to a whole different extreme as if you would never grow a bicep unless you go like this in an exercise. As long as you keep it, yes, you're gonna have good form for the technique and uh, for to prevent injuries, but as long as you're putting tension on the muscle, the muscle will grow. Time under tension, guys. I'm, I'm close to this video by telling you try to, if you don't believe me, pick any muscle, right? Pick any muscle. You guys remember when my chest was really big back in the, t back in the days, and I used to do 100 push ups a day. And my chest blew up, even though my bench sucked ass. 100 push-ups a day every morning. My chest used to burn around like the 50th rep. So I didn't even know what I was doing, and I built a great chest when I was doing it. I stopped doing it. I went back to benching. My bench went up, and my chest went down, because heavy benching, it's not enough time on the tension. But that's a whole different video. I'm fucking bugging. Uh, what's another example? Oh, by the way, that's just a regular trivia. Phil Heath, Mr. Olympia, the GIF, huge muscle, whatever. He's from Denver. He trains in Denver, which is the place in America with like one of the highest altitudes. Um, so the oxygen sucks out there, guys. Like full of miles and shit. Denver, Colorado. I'm not saying that's the reason why he's huge, but you know, it's not a you know, it's just something trivia. Just think about it. Phil Heath is from Denver. He trains in Denver. He's always complaining how the oxygen sucks out there, so he can't really live heavy. But he's fucking huge. But um, that's just something I just want to throw in there. It has nothing to do. Maybe he plays a part, but I don't think it does, because then everybody in Denver would be fucking jacked, which is not the case. But um. Yeah, guys, use drop sets, use techniques to intensify your your training. Feel the burn, get the lactic acid, and I guarantee you're gonna see results. Like I said, pick a body part, and for the next three to six weeks, right, stop doing all that heavy bullshit, right? Heavy weights build muscle, but it's time on the tissue that's the number one factor. Pick a body part, pick a weight that's heavy enough for you to get you some good quality reps. And just keep, do burnouts, right? Don't do anything else with that body part. Just do a lot of time on attention, right? So if you're doing biceps, for example, a lot of motherfuckers are going to pick, pick biceps for some reason. Grab, like, I don't know, 40-pound dumbbells, do your reps, right? And when you reach failure, drop the weight, go to 35, keep going. And people are saying, well, you said heavy weight. Well, obviously, when you reach failure with 40 pounds and you go to 35, 35 is fucking heavy. Same thing, when you reach failure with 35 and you go to 30 and then 20, you get to a point where 15 pounds is like, Ugh, and the burn is intense. So when I say heavy, I mean keep the weight heavy. Somebody said, well, how do I do heavy weights with a lot of reps? You do drop sets or you do super sets. You switch from uh, um, um, seated curls to standing curls, but you could cheat a little bit, right? So find ways to extend your sets, guys. That's the conclusion. That's the moral of this video is hypoxia builds muscle. It's not anything new or revolutionary, guys. Keep doing the same training you're doing. Just extend the time on the tension. Look for the burn, right? Because the funny thing about the funny thing about the body is you can't tell when you're building muscle. You can't be like, oh my god, Porti said this is activated right now. I feel it. I, I smell it. Nah. But when you um when the demand for oxygen is, is is high, you feel lactic acid. It's a great signal, right? It's a great way to tell you oxygen is low, meaning you're in a hypoxic environment, meaning protein is gonna go up. Come out with a good diet and good nutrition. You should make some gains. Hope this video helps, guys. Way longer than I, than I intended, but it's the result of a lot of studies that I'm still doing. I'm still talking to professors of biology and, and anatomy, physiology, physics, chemistry, and we all looking at this thing together. I keep asking questions. And whenever I get answers, I bring it to you guys for free, motherfuckers. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Like the video. If you don't, fuck you. I'm out.